right, Mike. Uh, how fortunate are we? We are, we are going to be joined by the defensive rookie of the month. That is Asante Samuel Jr. You just saw the highlights there. Intercepting, oh, no small thing. Intercepting in one of those clips, Dak Prescott. In the other, oh, I don't know, Patrick Mahomes. In the Patrick Mahomes interception, Asante, that was a little drama. That was that was had a little flair to it. Had a little stretch out. You look like a receiver picking that one off. And Asante, I got to tell you, uh, Michael Smith said this earlier, and I'm going to back him up. Man, we feel old. We feel old, man. Like we both, we we cut our teeth covering the New England Patriots. And I remember when your father was drafted. <laughs> I remember that draft day, and here you are playing in the league, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Man, we're great, doing great. And, and let me tell you, uh, first of all, we know you're 21 years old. Uh, my first question for you, you got this is your birthday weekend. So yeah, what, what are the birthday weekend plans? We, we, we trying to get a three interception game. What's up for the weekend? <laughs> God's plan. I'm gonna leave it up to God. I just want to I, I just want to make sure we win though, for sure. You what was, have what was it uh, like? Uh, no, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say you got two interceptions, four passes defense, and listen, man, this this is this blew my mind. Forty six coverage snaps, Asante. You've allowed one catch for minus two yards. Like you're playing some lockdown defense. What, to what would you attribute your ability to transition so smoothly, so quickly from the college game to the NFL game? Uh, I was just saying, uh, being from Florida, um, going against uh, some of the best athletes in the world in Florida and from high school, I went to St. Thomas Aquinas. That's a powerhouse high school. Then Florida State, we always have guys that's athletes and uh, pro pro NFL guys. So I felt like um, my upbringing and from Little League, uh, Pop Warner, just playing against some top talent in Pop Warner, just it's just uh, years of going against great competition. Well, that, that leads me right into my next question because I imagine seeing Mike mentioned you picking off Dak Prescott and Patrick Mahomes. I imagine seeing him on Sundays is not that difficult given that you lining up across from Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Justin Herbert slinging that thing every day in practice. How has practicing against your offense made you better? Oh, uh, in training camp, they got me a lot better. Uh, just seeing like little things that uh, vet guys know, like Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, like little things to get little uh, separation or uh, ball placement from Justin Herbert. And it's just uh, those guys are great. They have a great duo, great quarterback, uh, great offense all around. So uh, I'm just blessed to be able to be a part of that and be able to compete with them guys every day. Uh, I, I mentioned I mentioned your father earlier and how in New England when they drafted him even before they drafted him uh, Josh McDaniels at the time worked him out in Central Florida. He came back reporting about this guy Asante Samuel jr. And uh, Asante Samuel, excuse me and said he loves the big lights. He loves big games in big games. He's going to play his best and you saw your father do that with all his uh, career interceptions. I'm wondering what's your first memory of of seeing your father in the NFL is there a is there a moment that you remember or is it just like hey I remember my dad uh, as a member of the Patriots what, what was just what was your first memory of, of him in the pros uh, I wouldn't say my first memory but a memory that always sticks out to me is when um I think it was the the AFC championship game when he picked off Peyton Manny and uh that's kind of like uh you picking off Peyton Manny and, and, and that time, that was like kind of a big thing. So when he did that, that kind of like always stuck with me. And they still play that until this, until this day. You know what, Asante? I got a, I got a personal question to ask you. Um, somewhat of a personal question. You know, obviously named after your father. A lot of people, I'm sure, like us, bring up your father to you. You chip off the old block, a ball hawk, um, you know, following in his footsteps, right? But I'm always fascinated, you know, we, we talk about fatherhood a lot on this show. Michael has two sons. I got a son. I'm named after my dad. I'm fascinated by people who follow in their parents or in this case, their father's footsteps. Can you can you talk about explain to us what that's like to kind of balance that privilege with that pressure, uh, but also like just trying to be your own person and not wanting just to be a Sante Samuel 
junior, but to be your own player, your own man, your own person? Like, what is that balance like for you? Uh, I feel like it's not even any pressure. If you go out there and you work hard every, each week and go out there and grind, I mean, you, you're just gonna go out there and, and, and show what you've been grinding for. But uh, it's definitely a privilege. And uh, I feel like uh, it, it helped me in the long run, just being able to uh, have a, a father that was in the NFL and just seeing him do some, seeing him do things and see how he go about things. I feel like that helped me. Yeah, and I think that's a, I think it's a great question, Mike and uh, Asante. You brought up uh, your father in that interception, just for example. You know, 2000, uh, 2006, and he ran the route better than Marvin Harrison did. And he picked it off and ran back. I, I remember it to this day. I remember it like it happened yesterday. But you said it helped you to have him in your life, probably in many ways. But football wise, do you ever talk technique with them? And, and and if so, what's the what's the biggest piece of advice technique wise that he gave you that you still apply today? Uh, I say uh, definitely he just helped me with my ball skills and like being able to track the ball, being able to go get the ball and just being around the ball, I feel like that's what he helped me out the most. And um, yeah, that's what he, just getting that ball. That's a, the ball is the key. And if you get the ball, you're gonna be a great player in this league. What do, what do you wanna continue to build on? I mean, again, two interceptions in your first three games off of, again, two of the elite quarterbacks in the league you're fitting right in. I, I, I just rattled off the stats. You're not giving up practically anything in coverage. What are the things that you look at that you still see? Yeah, I'm rookie of the month, but I still got areas that I can improve upon that I need to that I need to tighten up. What, what areas do you still feel like you need to tighten up? Uh, honestly, uh, and you can ask my head coach, I feel like I still haven't even played a good game yet. I mean, I caught in a sense and made plays, but like all around, four quarters of football, I feel like I haven't played my best football yet. So I'm still grinding. I'm still a rookie. I still got a lot. I, it's three games. I mean, three games is a lot, but it's a little bit compared to 17. So it's just the beginning of the stretch. And I'm um, just trying to get comfortable and uh, just execute out there and uh, win games. Because, you know, man, like I really, I, we, we've been talking a lot about your dad because we grew up covering your dad. And obviously you have the same name. Y'all play the same position. You're off to a great start, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, I really want to get to it, it, this isn't just God given talent or genetics that he passed on. Obviously, he's giving you some advice and so on and so forth. But I'd love to know what did Asante Samuel Jr. You mentioned that grind. What did Asante Samuel Jr. do to get to this point, to go to FSU, to ball out of FSU, to be a second round pick, to come in and be, uh, you know, rookie of the month, his first month in the league? What did you do to get here? Because nothing was handed to you, I'm sure, despite having a famous name. Oh, for sure. I, uh, I say it started um, when I was a kid, Little League. I been had the name of Sante Samuel. So uh, when I'm out there, they kind of like gunning for me. I got a, a target on my back because uh, obviously my, my dad was in the NFL. So they trying to make a name off this so, and, and make plays off me. So uh, I always had to bring my A game. And uh, it just always was a competition. I always wanted to come out on top regardless of the situation. So, uh, yeah, it, it's been a long, this didn't happen overnight. This happened many years of training, many years of grinding, many years of mental focus and um, being able to just push through everything, all the adversity and just, and just, uh, I'm just blessed to be here. So uh, I couldn't have done it without my family, my, uh, everybody that helped me get here and my coaches, everybody. So it, it wasn't um, just me. It was uh, a lot of people. You talked about your your high school uh, St. Thomas Aquinas and how the competition there was very high. Uh, give us an example like you know week to week. You know, who did you go against that that we would know whether from college or, or now in the pros just like you who were some of the folks that you had to uh, go up against. Uh, well, we we had Joshua Palmer. Uh, he's on our team now. Uh, Joshua Palmer. He, he, uh, he got drafted with me this year. Uh, he was a receiver out there. We had a, a guy named Sam Bruce. He was like the number one receiver in the country at the time. We had a guy named Trayvon Grimes. We had a guy, he was a five-star at the time. We had a guy named uh, Michael Harley. He's at Miami right now. We had a lot of guys that were elite talent that went D1. I think everybody in the receiver room went D1 uh, from St. Thomas. So uh, 
just going up, just showing up to practice, you're going to get better. So all you got to do is show up at the same time. Yeah, and so now, I mean, you've, you've been used to that. As you said, high school, uh, best of the best. Obviously, Florida State, the tradition there is rich, especially at, the, at your position. I mean, it, one of the greatest ever, prime time. But now when you look at T-ball. the pros, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Terrell Buckley, top five pick there too. Um, when you when you get to the pros and you are going against these elite players, what what stands out to you? Is there is there something that maybe surprised you? Whether it was your first preseason game or first game, speed, route running, anything jump out at you and say, "Oh wait a minute, this is a little different. I got to adjust to this." I'll definitely say like the timing of the quarterbacks and uh, it's like uh, as soon as the receiver getting out the break, it's like the the, the football is already hitting the receiver's chest, so. You can't really have too many false steps and you can't you can't have any false steps if you want to make a play on the ball in this league. So uh, you just got to make sure you know what's going on, know your call, know how the right leverage, make sure you're doing all the little things because the little things are miles in the NFL. Last thing we got for you, man, is this. Uh, There's a lot of excitement about your team, especially you know, after that win last week and the four takeaways y'all had against the Chiefs. You got an exciting young quarterback. The offensive might have the offensive rookie of the year last year. You're on your way to being defensive rookie of the year this year. But what's the mood around the team? And and what did that win against Kansas City uh, in Kansas City? What did that mean for you guys in, in terms of y'all confidence and just the energy and excitement internally? Because there's a lot of excitement now about the Chargers on the outside. Oh, internally, it was good. It was a nice win. It was definitely a, a division win, so we we appreciated that win. But we came in that week knowing we was going to win, and it, it it didn't surprise anybody in the locker room after we won. So it was kind of like uh, we just we just held, holding ourselves to a higher standard from before. So like we feel like we should dominate. Everything is about the Chargers. We play different teams, but everything at the end of the day is about the Chargers, and we got to make sure. The main thing is the main thing and uh, do what we do best and uh, just go out there and execute and compete. That's all you can do out here. Well, man, you're playing like you belong in the, at this level. You're talking like you belong at this level. It's, it's obvious that you were built for this. Can't wait to see what y'all do against the Raiders, man. It's going to be a hell of a game. Chargers Raiders this weekend. And uh, happy birthday, 22. Oh, we wouldn't give, give me 22 again. Uh, you know, so, <laughs> hey, congratulations, man, on, on being Defensive Rookie of the Month. 